Yo, what is going on, everybody? Welcome. If anyone's here already. Sorry for the delay. I have been working on this for four hours, but I've got it to a point where I think it's... I think I can get it streaming without worrying about crashing, because I'm not going to be editing the UI anymore. What's up, Soul Ticker? So I'll show you where I got today. Um, I had to make, I had to edit the UI, and then I also had to edit some of the logic here because my pillar placement was screwing up when I tried to get foundations working. But I want to get like a little bit of foundation before I started streaming. Uh, but I, th I think I think we're good enough here to can keep going. Let me move that back where it's supposed to be. Okay. So I had to add some logic here into my my placement. So there is not going to be a hundred percent dynamic. Like I switch the class and we're done. Um, I am going to have to on the actual placement edit because like pillars are going to have to place differently than foundations, which are going to have to place differently than walls, which are going to have to place differently than ceilings. So for each kind of structure placement, I'm I'm, I'm going to have to change which is what we have here we have a switch on string and i just have it set to pillars right now um and i can kind of show you what i've done uh yes i worked i uh, literally 11 hours in the dev kit yesterday uh and i've already been working on it four hours this morning but i want to try to get as much done as i can so i'm gonna show you what i did this morning a lot of work i just told kelsey i was like i've done a lot of work and i don't feel like i've accomplished anything because all that work was just 
to get it to where it was after changing a few things uh, for the new UI. So when you have your remote out, you can just hit T and it opens this menu, um, which will scroll if it gets too big. This is not the final version of the menu, but it's good enough for right now since we only have like nine structures um, we're spawning in. Um, but eventually we'll have categories um, and everything. UIs, yes. Uh, the, pro the problem is they crash for the stupidest reasons. Now, an inexperienced modder will have a far or more crashes. Like, it'll crash a lot because there are nuances to it that if you avoid, it won't crash. But there's a lot of times it just it just crashes. Like, I renamed a button. Like, this button. I renamed it. And the dev kit crashed because I renamed it. So um, it's a lot of waiting when you're making UIs. You have to move very slowly and very deliberately. If you go too fast, it crashes. So literally, like, you change the name, you save, you compile. You change the name, you save, you compile. And you typically won't crash if you do it like that. It just takes a very long time, and it's very annoying. So I didn't uh, want to show all that on the dev kit because, like I said, it's kind of boring. But this is the, the start of the UI here. Um, I've got pillars and foundations going so far. Like I said, this is not the final version of the UI by any means. Um, it's probably going to change significantly for the final version, but I'm going to kind of be adding to it. Um, and then eventually I'll have to get my own pictures in here, which is why they're kind of big, because when I start doing stuff like dynamic bridges, dynamic bases, all that stuff, I'm going to need a pretty big picture to show you what uh, it is. Um, so I may need more room. So uh, like I said, this is a scroll box. If you're on a small screen, it'll scroll down. Uh, Brady is subscribing for 55 months with the 55th fuck rock. <laughs> How's it going, Brady? Uh, so that's what we got so far right now. You can, you know, you can click your pillar and then start clicking. There's still one more bug with this I need to fix. You'll see here if I right click and then left click, it goes back to wooden pillars and you've got to reset it. Um, because it's saved in a buff that actually gets destroyed. Um, so, um, not a huge deal for me right now, but it is something I'll fix. Um, right now I have foundations. You can you can drag them out. You can, um, they don't really work when you build them very well yet, but it's getting there. I'll show you what I mean by that. Oh, uh, they might work better because I have made some changes. Well, oh, they are working now. <laughs> I fixed it. This is what I was working on all morning. Um, this is not how final placement of pillars or the foundations is going to work. I want to make it um, with pillars and foundations. I actually want to enable horizontal snapping. I want to have a button to enable horizontal snapping. So you you can either place the foundations like that if you're wanting to make like a little line. So say you want to keep stuff from spawning in an area. Um, I keep trying to click the picture. So say you want to keep stuff from spawning. So you could do if you wanted to do that without snapping. I want that to be an option. So, you know, like if you cover an area and foundations, stuff won't spawn there. So I want to have that be an option. Um, but I, the foundations look pretty cool if you want to do, uh, you know, eventually I'll have them to where they snap together like that. The only problem with snapping together is uh, I'm going to have to redo my logic for corners because, yeah, we have curved corners. So we're going to have to change that up. I wonder if those will snap together. No, they won't because I'm removing those snap points. Never mind. Um, so yeah, I got to do a lot with snap points, which is what I was working on this morning. And that's why it took me a little long to get started or not long, but I was actually starting. That's why it took me a while to start streaming rather. So you can see the foundations look, look cool in the corners, but if you go too tight, they start to overlap and stuff. But that's, yeah. But like I said, if I want to do snapping, it's all got to be, um, right angled corners and stuff. So you can see where the challenges start to come in. But if you wanted to do something like this you could I gotta see this but I got the initial building working and my um the reason I had to make a change is I thought I had everything dynamic there was still one part in here that wasn't dynamic so the pillars were placing underground and it took me a solid hour to figure out what was going on it was just turning out and it was two spots I left hard-coded values in there um, which ended up being here um, right here and right here, I had hard-coded values in the negative 98 and the negative 7.5 um, that I was adjusting from the mesh being off. So I added it to this function. Um, and now, instead of being hard-coded, we're, you know, we're doing the whole spawn structure in and get its transforms and stuff. 
uh, and then we're uh, subtracting it because we add it. We add it for the the meshes. We have to subtract it back for the pillars, which I was doing manually, and it took me a long time to figure it out. I was like, "What is going on?" It was driving me nuts. And then after I got that fixed, my pillars were spawning like doom, 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 lower, higher, higher. They were spawning in like triangles, and I couldn't figure out what was going on. And it was all down to I had deleted my snap point um, functionality because I was wanting to get foundations working. Um, which messed up pillars and made them snap all funky. So I had to add that back in, um, which is then when I decided that I'm going to add this in because we're going to have to do some manual work here, not a ton, um, but for each different kind of structure, we're going to have to do different snap point logic. Um, now, I won't have to do different snap point logic for every foundation, but I'll have to do different for pillars, foundations, walls, ceilings, slope ceiling, you know, whatever they snap to. Um, Got to do it differently uh, for each of those. So, um, we pretty much actually you see we have like unsnapped foundation placement good to go already um but we gotta get logic for snapped snapped placement going which is what we're gonna try to work on today we're definitely not gonna finish don't know how far we're gonna make it like i said i'm 15 hours into just preparing to be able to do the foundations <laughs> so yeah yeah, change one bit, it messes up the bit before. Which is why I've decided to do this, because my pillar placement is perfect. It doesn't have snap placement yet, which I'm going to add in. Um, basically, when I add snap placement, you're they're going to place perfectly apart and the snap together, and top height's going to change. But I'm not adding snap placement for pillars yet, because they're pillar walls right now. I'm just going to start working on foundations, which means this is going to get to be quite a large, uh, quite a large graph. But is what it is so what i did here is um i switch on string and i'm changing which snap points i'm removing uh, which is very important for pillars i uh, haven't quite decided how i'm gonna do foundations yet because that's gonna be like a whole nother change like i gotta make sure my like my preview structures aren't gonna be adjustable um because i need it to place it's it's a completely different place logic. I want to click one corner and then drag it. It'll drag and slide nine. But if you'd go in like a diagonal, it'll fill in that space between the diagonal completely with foundations. Um, so it's a completely different um, logic as far as all of this goes. So it's a big change. So I got to figure out how exactly I want to do this if I want to do a whole completely new spline actor and new buffs um or if i want to try to edit what i've got um that's the hard part the nice thing about us using the same spline actor is i can edit everything on the fly um the bad part is i don't really need a spline um for this i just need two points so i may actually go a different route um for the foundation placement or i may have two different kinds of foundation placements i may have my foundation wall i'm also going to be oh, speaking of which i'm also going to be adding in or trying to make the foundation stackable so i want to add in stacking snap points for foundations uh, which that, that'll be fun i'm gonna do that at runtime um kind of like the uh better structure mod i forget what it's called the mod we used on the server uh, i actually removed it when i installed dynamic structures because it will mess up my mod most likely because they edit the snap points at runtime and i'm editing the snap points at runtime and yeah we don't want two mods doing the same thing um it would likely be okay, but it would be weird. Um, so what I... Hmm, I'm just thinking, I don't... Because the spline is that, that big curve you see that they fall. I don't need that for foundation placement. I just need two corners. Because um, I don't need the points in between. They're useless. So I really, hmm. I might just do another buff, which would be a, it'd be a lot of work, but it's the it's kind of the right thing to do when you select 
Yeah, I need to start and end, which I can do with this spline. As well. I'm trying to decide how I want to do this. Because I do want to be able to make like a line, a curvy line of foundations if I want to, to make, um, um, hey, what's up, right? To make a, a wall. Like just a, like a like even like an exterior wall, but I also want to do the floors. So I may have like two different foundation placement styles for foundation or placement styles for foundations. I should do that for pillars too, actually, with my flat top pillars. That way I can like if I want to make a a base on a mountain that's not even, I can do like start point and end point for pillars. That have a flat top because that's kind of the same thing I want to do. Fence foundations, uh, fence supports in the cards. Yes, yes, they are. Oh, here we go. That will be in the railing section here place lines of railings without substance or with included fence supports below so the fence foundation logic and all fence foundation stuff will be when i start working on railings doesn't like the way with the pillars uh no not really but um like i said if i want to build a wall out of my base without out of foundations and then put walls up would be very useful um, like a nice curved wall around my base could be very nice um, so I definitely want to keep that logic I don't want to um, I don't want to not have it because it's already built uh, for one thing so what I think I'll do is maybe here wait, let me open it up So I'm thinking maybe here I'll have metal foundations and I'll have like line and floor options uh, available. And I'm going to have to build because for pillars I want to be able to do a line. For fence foundations I want to be able to do a line. Um, for fence supports I want to be able to do a line. For foundations I want to be able to do a line. Anything you can place on the ground, torches, all that stuff I want to be able to do a line of them um, like this. So I need a line. Uh, line and like and then I need like grid placement um, So I may do like line and grid buttons instead of this um, But for right now, we're gonna use metal foundation and we're gonna start work on grid placement and then I'll go back and add more buttons I think that's what I'll do. I'll do like line and grid um, And I'll do the same thing for these as well. I'll add a line and a grid button. That's why I said this UI is not permanent It is very subject to change um, And become more detailed. I also want to get the UI working on the screen so if I select metal foundation, then like tool tips pop up on the edge of my screen where it says it has a T to change and it says hold control and scroll wheel to, to, to space out and all that stuff. Uh, for base floors. Yeah, grid will be great for foundations for base floors, um, tops of mountains. Um, but you see, I, um, this is where I need new pillar logic too because if I'm on a mountain, I would need to make sure the tops of the pillars are all even and then trace down till they have support. And that's kind of the same thing I'm going to be doing with bridges when I go with my dynamic bridges. I have to pl find the top of the bridge, make it, and then I have to trace down, and then I have to build up. So I have to I have to build it in reverse in my preview structure, and then the right way when I actually build it. So um, yeah, there's a lot of work to do on that. <sighs> I just got to think what all I need to redo now because I'm gonna I think I'm gonna use copy. I'm just I think I'm just gonna make a copy of each of these buffs and have it just give you a different buff. Um, based on what you select, where is it? Because right now here, I'm just adding the UI in this buff. So what I might do, I might just give the UI its own buff. Um, when you activate the remote, you just hit it and open the UI, uh, and then select your thing. And then this will be my this will be my dynamic pillar buff basically and then I'll have to make a uh, dynamic grid buff and stuff like that so we'll have several different kinds of buffs 
uh, instead of trying to, I, and I could do it all in one buff with uh, switches like this, um, which I could do. Actually, I could do that pretty easily. Based on the structure class you pick, I could change. Yeah. Satisfactory. Yeah, exactly. Um, Rubidium. I think on the satisfactory when you like scroll wheel to make it fatter. You place a line and you like scroll wheel and you make a big area of them. That's exactly, exactly what I'm gonna be doing here. Um, minus the scroll wheel part. way to do this. Yeah, because this is my spline based building. I don't really need the spline. Alright, I think I'm going to go with a separate buff for UI. Clear the slide noise and add world. Okay. I could use this line and just keep it to be a two point slide. A lot of this logic I will rebuild, so that's why I'm kind of debating if I want to, or not rebuild, I will be reusing a lot of this logic. That's why I'm kind of trying to debate if I want to use this buff, because I can save a little bit of mod size. It's not going to be a lot, but if I can reuse some of this. I think it's going to be... No, I think I'll, yeah, I think I'm going to go with a separate buff. It's just, I think it's, it's going to keep it oop, cleaner, nicer. All right. Yeah, let's do that. All right. Let's, um, new folder, grid buffs, dynamic building. We're going to copy that there. I have a grid building. 
All right, then I'm gonna need a buff for UI activation. So we'll just throw that. We'll throw a quick UI buff activation. Uh, some changes real quick. Yeah, yeah. All right. Chose this one because it doesn't have that much stuff in it. Get rid of all this. Actually, let's keep that. I can be useful. All right. Keep that buff. Is that about that event? Now for the fun part, deleting all this without crashing. Another thing I recommend doing if you're deleting a lot of variables in the Argo Dev Kit is to delete like four or five and then compile, or you will most likely crash if you do too many at once, and especially if you do them too fast. It doesn't like it when you do stuff fast. All right. So let's go back into our dynamic building buff. We're going to grab this real quick this is over here i'm gonna go back and we need to grab our goodies here we're gonna need those let's throw that in there Okay. I need to disconnect this here. We don't need this. We're changing up how that works. All right, so UI activation we were calling on event again play. Don't need to do here anymore. up here okay you still need to be able to activate that ui when using this but i don't need it here anymore
this is gonna add a buff instead, basically. I'll just drag this off for now. All right, this is gonna add the buff activation instead. If you hit it while the placement buff is active. We'll need to do that on all of them. All right, so. All right, when we hit T. Run on server, please. All right. really move this into a persistent buff on the player <laughs> and you wouldn't even need a remote which is what I'm gonna do in the long run but not right now okay uh what was that doing uh buh -buh, what was that buff Okay. For now, I'm just activating the buff. Oh, is that the primal buff? I guess it is. I don't have to worry about that. Okay. Let's change this. I don't have to cast if I do that. Be so specific. Primal and buff. Hey, nope. I was holding alt. Damn it. I must have hit control. <laughs> there we go. That's what we need. So now when we hit T, we get a T with the remote out. We get a buff here um, to select our UI, which is going to be happening here. And on begin play, we're going to want to do none of that. A self reference here. Yeah. 
built this was for the other buff where we set the structure class. So. here if it's not already there to retool this a little bit because we are not in our dynamic buff and we won't be using a spline all the time so based on what these select is what we're going to do hmm Before all I had to do was change the class and everything followed, but now it's not so much. Now we gotta change between grid, spline placement, and then eventually to like bridge placement and all that other stuff. So we're gonna have to have our switch system in here selected from the UI here. Uh, which I think our buff reference is just exposed on spawn. That is. So let's duplicate this. Of reference uh, UI activator activator uh. so we need to send instead of sending it to that buff I need to send all this I need to get a structure class okay yeah I need to set the structure class and then this part I need to handle from the UI activation buff so let's get a structure class variable on here It's not supposed to exist. Okay. Uh, primal structure, I believe, is what I named it. And this will be for spline based placing versus grid based. So we'll need, to, we'll need that too. Um, so that's going to go somewhere else. Alright, so we set our structure class, and based on our structure class, we need to spawn the other buff and do that. And the other buff, not in here. So, let's go back to dynamic building. Do I still have that? I didn't delete that in there, did I? No, I just set it down here. Okay, I don't need this here. That's perfectly fine here. This is what we need. We need to update the spline structure class. Okay, if it's a spline. So in our selection here, we also need, based on what button we hit, to set if it's a spline or a grid or what. And I think I'm just going to do that through a I'm gonna do it through a string because I'm gonna have several different kinds, it's not just gonna be two. Which means I'm gonna have to readjust this whole thing. Alright, so wood pillar is gonna be spline. For now I'm just gonna For now I'm gonna make all the 
pillars into splines. And then I'll change the foundations all into grids for now. And then after we get it working, we'll go back and add more buttons and it'll be easy peasy from there. And that'll also future proof it a little bit for stuff like, like I just do class here, but we'll also be future proofing for bridges and bases and defenses, stuff like that. We'll have, by doing it as a string, we'll be able to pretty much do anything. Oh, before we go too far, let me compile this. Actually, need that. Okay. Uh, let's see. The structure is meant type. Let's compile. And then refresh all our nodes. Oh, they actually redid it for me. Nice. Okay. So that is all my pillars placed and set to spline. So we're gonna put a little break in here. And I did already add games pad support to this part. So this UI will work on a gamepad a controller. And these are gonna be grid. And this is gonna make a difference for us here. We're going to set structure placement type on our UI activation here. So let's get ourselves a variable, make it a string. Structure activate, uh, no placement, placement type. Okay, we have that there, let's save so we can get access to it. to our UI actor. All right. That I need to okay. All right. those bottom parts there right now so I can grab them and copy paste them later when I need to or in a few minutes all right that'll give us our placement type and our structure type and then remove it from the viewport on our UI buff and I need to change this to this actually and you can disconnect that all right let's leave it like that it should be all I need here So when you click a button now, it's going to call that. It's going to do the spec let's set spawn class on buff. And now I need, after we set these, we're going to need a, an event on the UI activation buff here. buff reference we can go actually let's just delete that where else is it used Okay. 
always have to make sure you actually null reference everything in a UI because you don't actually delete UIs. You just remove them from the view and they're still there in the background until the server restarts, which is kind of stupid, but that's how it works. Uh, yeah, I'm working on dynamic structures. <sighs> Getting there. We're changing up our UIs, our, our UI and how it works. Before we go any farther, because I got to get different placement styles. Okay, that's the wrong one. Structure selection. Did I not delete that? I thought I did. No, I did not. That's right. It gave me there. There we go. There we go. That's better. All right, now we have our UI. So we're gonna need a custom event on here for, after you select your structure type, you're going to need to call the, or you need to add the buff to Some of it. That's the wrong place. No, don't, no, don't go in there. I wanted you here. There we go. All right. So after you select a structure, uh, let's do a custom event. It's gonna be a run on server. Activate building buff. Biff. Activate building biff. Hold on. No, I need to do. Let's do a. We're gonna pass facts. That should be happening off of client. Yes. Okay. So um, pass UI. UI vars to buff. I'm gonna need to replicate. So we are passing a resetting and then getting these. Then we're gonna do a switch on string here on the client if you're on a server or on the player if you're not on a server. So dedicated server and client are when you're playing on a server. Uh, the server is a server and the client's a client, but when you're playing single player, everything happens on player server, which is where my issues came in the other day. They are, I thought they were separated between player server and client on single player. They're not. It's all player server. All 
All right, so continue down our chain of logic here. We'll set those, and then we're gonna call. Oh, what did I call it? Did I, oh, I didn't compile. That's why it's not showing up. I was like, why isn't this showing up? I oh, thought it was path. Gotta compile. Otherwise, it doesn't know it's there. All right, let's try that again. Pass UI. All right, we're setting them. And then we're going to call the event that we set them on. All right, and then here's our switch on string. We do not want a default pin. And right now we're only gonna have two. We're gonna have spline and grid. All right, for spline, we wanna do activate building buff. Which should give us our building buff. And this is needs to be passed. Let's pass our structure through to the server. All right, dynamic building structure class. So we need to set. set to run on client, don't I? So I was calling it from the UI. I will be able to call it while this buff is already open. So if the buff exists already, what we want to do is this. here okay
Ja, ja. What's that called? Update spline post UI. train right now so we'll see what works in in real play here all right so if it's a spline based we come up here all right let's start here get our selection event grid and stuff so we click on the wood pillar we're gonna hit wood pillar we're gonna hit spline and then it's gonna send us here with a wood pillar and spline we're gonna pass variables to ui buff we're just gonna be here and client we're gonna pass them over to the server with the primal structure. Only if it's a spline, if it's a grid, let's just uh, print string for now. And we'll make it nice and red. And say grid. Okay, but the buff exists. Or the buff does not exist, we're going to add it, set the structure class, and destroy ourselves. If its buff does exist, we're going to update and then destroy ourselves. Don't want to leave this buff on. Right. If that cast fails for any reason, we want to just destroy ourselves. Okay. Oh, wait, no. This we want to do destroy self. I also want to do that on the server. I did not double click that. All right, there's our fail proof thingies there. should handle that now let's go back to our we got to make a few changes in the dynamic building i think for how we're handling that on begin play all right i don't need this anymore oh actually i i'm gonna leave that actually i do need to add some there um begin play we come in here I need to change this. I don't want to do this. empty we'll set it to wood pillar but i don't want to just set it to right like before i was just defaulting to wood pillar if you left clicked without setting anything um but now we're setting something before we play so i need to make sure i don't do that unless it's empty i'm just doing the same thing here okay i had it just 
Okay, so we're gonna play. We're gonna come in here. Select our pillar. And then I don't really need that anymore. We're not gonna be setting that. Because that's not really. How you activate it anymore? You have to hit T first. But I'll, I'll leave that in. So the remote here. I'm gonna leave that. So you can just add the buff and it'll start with the wood pillars. Um, and then you can hit T after if you want. And T here. I'm going to add the UI buff. Going through my line real quick. We're adding our UI buff, which is this. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. After we add our UI buff, as soon as it starts, we get a point to delay. But our usual blah blah blah. All right, we add our UI selection menu to viewport, and we don't do anything else, which is this. And then when we click those, if we click one of the pillars, we're going to get um, our UI activator, which is set on spawn, so that should be valid. But I have put a valid check in there anyway, just so we don't crash. Come on. There we go. And then we call that, and then we remove this from view. Uh, we call that, and then on the client from that, which should already be on the client, but just to be safe, we're getting our structure placement type, uh, which we just set, which should be spline, if we go to the top, and then we'll test that for grid. Um, we come up here, if we don't already have our dynamic building buff, we're going to add it and set the structure class. If we do have it, we're going to set the structure class and update the spline, and then destroy the buff. Okay, I think we're ready to test it. I think um, I won't be able to activate the UI right now. We, we need to do this. Okay. And then if we're in here and we hit T, we want to give ourselves or do this basically the same thing as the remote. So we'll just copy that paste. Copy and paste. That way we can. Do that. Yeah, let's do this. Am I using this anywhere anymore? Yeah, I removed it. I don't think I need that anymore. Well, if we crash, we know why. I was using that from the UI, but not anymore. Probably another one too would be better. But I'm doing something a little different here now. Instead of doing it like this, I don't need to set a variable. I need just need to check if they have the buff.
And we're gonna change that. We're in the remote too. And then I think we'll, I think we'll be ready to test. We'll find out. So many changes. the UI buff actually at all. Because in every instance, I am destroying it as soon as it's done. Yeah, okay. Which is what we want. Alright, now I think we're ready to test. Our new selection system. And then we can start working on the all this just to start working on the foundations. All right, here's hoping we don't crash. We'll see. I'll destroy buff everywhere. Start debugging. Well, that did not come through. Well, let me let me debug one more thing. Or let me test one more thing. Try it before I before I click. Hang on, it's still just a wood pillar. Okay, it's not coming through somewhere. Let me put these in order. with her mouth. 
and activate the buff. That works great. All right, then we go into the buff. We can play, we're setting our ownership, we're setting our self-reference, we're adding our widget to the viewport. Good. And once our widget's on the viewport, we click the button we want. Set a class, we set our thing, that fires, that's working good. And here we set structure class and placement type. Let's check here and make sure this is coming through. All right, let's try that. Let's see if that works. here oh yeah that's probably what it is a few activation self It's right there. That should be valid. See if that prints. Okay, that's what I thought. That's where it seems. All right. So this is not a valid reference. Only gets to here for some reason. Let's figure out why. Because we're setting it on spawn.
the buff. Should be. Proper way to do self reference. Stay up longer because I did not see it. I think it was empty though. I think I see what they did. Wow. That's what I did. Whoops. <laughs> that was stupid. That's a dangerous some naming on the same thing. Okay. I set the wrong self to self. Should fix that. All right, I'll make sure it's all hooked up. Still. Let's try it again. Basically, I had an A that I needed to equal B. Instead of setting A to B, I set B to B. So I set nothing to itself. Long way around. Well, I did not fix it. Okay, let's see what's going wrong now. Is that still the case? I didn't see the invalid print. Let's put a print here. Let's see where we're failing now. Probably something else stupid. here So, it's partially correct. We're missing the... We don't seem to be updating the active spline. So let's fix that. So this is good. We're good here. That's these. We should be updating it here.
not calling that at all. All right, let's add some printies here. We're not printing that, so we're definitely going this way. are running. Actually, I should have called that no buff. This is backwards. This. We're slowly narrowing it down to where the problem is. Okay, it's not getting set client side. That's what the issue is. Our pillar on begin play. Why? Should be, I'm setting it right here. I'm literally setting it client side. Right, or er, no, I'm only setting it server side. Okay, I know my issue. We can get rid of these print strings now. Clean this up. I need to get this set uh, client side as well.
actually, instead of doing it there. I'm going to do it on begin play in the buff. I'm just going to replicate it to start. All right, hopefully that'll fix that. Let's find out. Fix the initial placement. Still need to fix the while the spline is active placement. Okay. Which I thought I was already doing. Here. That's what this was supposed to do. Should only need to be client side there.
it's gonna fix my issue, but I needed to do that. That's not valid. I can't set that on that. see what we get here. Well, we're not fix anything, but I added some debugging in there. I'm surprised if that fixed it, because I said it client-side, and I'm not dealing with it client-side, so that would be weird. Yeah, I didn't think so. Actually, it didn't call at all. Uh, why did it not call? again let's change this up has buff with the branch
Uh, I did the same thing earlier. Instead of checking for buff, I checked for a buff reference. It should work, but I didn't have it set up for that. I have it set up for this. little rearranging basically that was never going to be valid so I changed up the way it works Isn't crazy. I think I know the issue, though. Sure this is the issue because I'm not actually adding the buff there, which means I don't have a reference to the buff there. Oh, we're almost there. I'm adding the buff by clicking, which means I don't have the reference, which means we're gonna get an empty one. Haha, -ha. I know the issue. All right. thinking this is the only place I add the buff. This is not the only place I add the buff, so that's not always going to be true. So what we need to do here is make ourselves a little room. And if the player has the buff, we need to get buff of dynamic building. Why is that there twice? It's also not showing up as the right one. I think my dev kit needs to restart. There. 
that should now fix it. At least fix that part of it. We can finally get past here. Just doing this whole section wrong. some of this, make sure we're actually building stone pillars too. Alright. Now, let me try setting it before I open it. Good there. Let's give ourselves some resources. That little resource helper function in the dev kit is one of the best things I added to the mod. Makes testing so much easier. Okay. Spline placement is working. We haven't even got to foundations yet. Ugh. <laughs> this is all just to get that working. But it's working with our new system. And now we have a system selection. <sighs> that was a pain in the ass. But it's working. And that's what matters. Basically, uh, if we don't have the buff, we add it. We set the structure class, destroy the actor. Um, and we only have to set that one on the server because it already exists. Uh, it automatically sets it on the client on begin play, which is what that would be, begin play. But if we've already done a begin play, we have to get the buff that we already have because I was thinking I could just use this variable, but I didn't actually start the buff here, so that was invalid. And then we do all the logic to change it. So, yeah. <sighs> So do we have to select one? No, you can do either. That's why we just went through all that trouble. <laughs> that was to get it changed so you can change it mid-placement. Um, although if you change types mid-placement, it's pretty much going to start the placement over because you can't switch from a spline to a grid um, mid-spline. Like, it'll, it'll, it'll have to delete the spline. Um, but you can change from spline to spline mid-placement and, you know, continue. Um, so if you switch to like, if you switch from a spline to a grid, it's going to delete the spline and start placing the grid. But yeah, for, for the same types, you can switch mid placement here. Something's wrong with it. I put that in my hotbar and it's not. What the? It put the. Yeah, I gotta restart my dev kit. I think it's freaking out. Look at that. It, it put an Ingram in my hotbar somehow. Definitely need to restart my dev kit. <laughs> I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's done for the day. Like it says, uh, you've worked the shit out of me for like 17 hours now without much of a break. Look at those pretty tech pillars. Tech pillars do look cool. ourselves some tech pillars. I haven't really seen what they look like when you put them like super close together.
wish I could build on that fast. I can't though. It won't let me. This basically speeds up the server tick is what this does. Oh, shiny. Okay, I want to try a curve like that though. Hey, what's up, Apache? This would be an incredibly expensive wall to make. Oh, I forgot to put those close together. Dang it. I'm just going to stop it. I'm going to hit play again. I want to see them close together like that. Test it with these large structure sizes. Ah, I didn't space them again. Oh well. This I don't want to make more than one of, so this I'll probably do some dynamic stuff in, because the only thing I think I'm really going to need to change... For foundations, anyway, I think the only thing I really change is this, but not positive on that. It's gonna bug me. Trying to decide if I want to try to edit these or just start from scratch for the 
grid placement. I mean, I'll still be using a lot of logic from these. Hmm. I might just grab my remote and do some testing real quick. I just want to save and compile all these because I don't know when the last time I saved them all was. <laughs> Ankles are killing you with the sunburn. I'm just saving and compiling all these to be safe. And I really need to restart my dev kit because it's doing some weird stuff. But uh, we got the UI working. Neither one is going to be easy or time efficient. <laughs> They're both going to be a pain in the ass and take a lot of time. I'm just going to decide which one I want to do, really. I saw you sent me a picture of the, the pan the pot yeah but uh i got the ui working i got pillars added in the pillars are done i got it now it's time to start working on the foundations Kind of trippy looking. Well, that does look sweet. It'd be like a wallpaper right there. Mm. lot of work together all that uh all right guys i actually think i think i'm gonna go in and end here sorry for the short stream today it took me a while to get up and running without crashing um tomorrow we will start on the foundation i'm probably gonna i, I might get to play around with it today um but i'm gonna take a break because I, I like i said I, I did that for 11 hours yesterday and five hours or six hours this morning yeah six, six and a half hours this morning now uh so i'm actually gonna go ahead and call at the end um, I also need to do some thinking on which one of those two methods I want to do. So I'm going to think about that um, before I go any farther. And I'm going to get some food because I am starving. Uh, so hope you guys enjoyed, and we will catch you guys tomorrow, hopefully early morning. We shouldn't be messing with the UI, so it shouldn't be an issue. So we'll see you guys in the morning.